Good morning and welcome to Haven Heights Baptist Church. Welcome to those who are here and welcome to those listening online. Just a few announcements here before we begin this morning. Immediately following our service, we will have a Vacation Bible School meeting for all volunteers. So if you are volunteering with Vacation Bible School, stick around for just a couple minutes and then we'll meet in the fellowship hall. Vacation Bible School begins tomorrow. If you still have someone that you would like to invite, we have flyers on the table in the foyer. So we invite you to take one of those and we encourage you to invite people even last minute to come to Vacation Bible School. There's also registration forms out there on the table as well. Please make note that next Sunday after the service, we will have a fellowship meal. We're going to have a cookout with hamburgers and hot dogs and beans and potato salad and all of that good stuff. So please mark your calendars to stay after the service next week for our fellowship meal. Now let us take a moment to prepare our hearts for worship. Our call to worship comes from the epistle to the Colossians chapter 1. In him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. The word of our God. Please stand with me. <clears throat> joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, singing bird and flowering fountain, call us to Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy divine. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds 
birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, Send him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration, and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. You may be seated. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, how great thou art. Colossians chapter 1, in him all things were created. All things have been created through him and for him. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you this morning for your gift of life. We thank you this morning for your gift of creation. We thank you that you created and we thank you that your creation is for you. We thank you that this world can bring you glory because you created it good. We pray this morning that we would bring you glory. We pray that our singing, we pray that our preaching, we pray that our listening, we pray that our very lives would bring you glory. And so we pray for the preaching of your word yet to come. And we pray that your word would teach us more of who you are and instruct us how to live for you. We pray for our vacation Bible school, and we pray that many children would come. We pray that you would place it in the hearts of many to, to be here. We pray that you would bless every aspect of this week. We pray that you would use your word. We pray that you would use the crafts. We pray that you would use the games. We pray that you would use the food. We pray that you would use all of the fun to tell the story of your gospel. We pray that many children would hear that Jesus is the only Savior. And we pray that many would turn to him and trust in him for the hope of eternal life. We pray for all those who are hurting this day. We think of Russell Eckert, and we pray that you would heal his body after his surgery. We think of still others who are lonely and those who are grieving the passing of a loved one, and those who are disappointed, 
Father, we pray that in every difficulty that you would draw near. And Father, this morning we thank you that a new creation is coming. We thank you that there is coming a day for your own where there will be no more crying, sickness, or tears. And so we pray, come Lord Jesus, come. And this day we pray that you would bless these tithes and these offerings. And we pray that you would use these monies that many more might hear of your salvation. And we pray that many more might come to trust in the coming new creation. We pray that you'd bless the preaching of your word in this room. Let us hear. We pray that you'd bless the preaching of your word over the internet and later still on the radio. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Good morning. Good to see you all. Let's continue our worship.
by strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise have your Bible, I invite you to turn to the book of Psalms, and we'll be in Psalm 104, beginning in verse 24. Psalm 104, beginning in verse 24. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and Leviathan, which you form to frolic there. All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with your good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth, and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord.
This week we start Vacation Bible School. This year's Bible School is all about God's good design. God created us. God designed us. God's plan for us is good. The motto of this year's Vacation Bible School is this, created in Christ, designed for God's purpose. Our boys and girls will hear that we are created by God and even designed by God, and they're also going to hear that being created by God says something about God and also says something about us. So next week, we're going to look at being created by God says something about us. So that's next week. We're going to see how being designed speaks to who we are. But this week, we're going to look at God's creation says something about him. Being created by him says something about who the creator is. When I was in school, I took some art history classes. And one of the things I learned in these art history classes is that these art critics, those who study artistic creations, they aren't only interested in the created piece. They're interested in the one who made it. So the art critics say things like this. Monet had a unique understanding of light and color. Picasso understood forms and shadows. Michelangelo, he had this understanding of anatomy and structure. And Frank Lloyd Wright, he understood functionality. The art critics not only talked about the art, they talked about the artists because those who create not only create, but in their creation reveal something of who they are. That's really our aim this morning. Our plan this morning is to look at the creation, 
for the purpose of knowing more about the Creator. Looking at His creation to know something of Him as Creator. Before we start, let's pray. Father God, this morning we pray for Your help. And Father, we pray that as we return to a passage of Scripture that is familiar to so many of us, we pray that Your Word would come alive afresh. We pray that as we look at these familiar verses, we pray that nothing would be mundane, but rather magnificent. We pray that You would amaze us this morning with who You are. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I invite you to turn to the first page of your Bible, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, and we'll begin in verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it, and it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land. And he gathered water, he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants, and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to the various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, Plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let them be lights in the vault in the sky to give light to the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night and to separate the day from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the waters teems and that moves about in it according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind and God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said that the land produced living creatures according to their kinds. The livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, the wild animals, each according to its kind, and it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock, and over all wild animals, and over the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. I want to highlight this morning three things we learn about the creator from his creation. So if you're taking notes this morning, three things we learn about the creator from his creation. And those three things are, number one, God's greatness. God's greatness. Number two, God's goodness. God's goodness. And then number three, God's glory. God's glory. His greatness, His goodness, His glory. So first, God's greatness. Verse one, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth 
God created all of this. He created all the things on the earth, all the things that we see. He created all the things in the oceans, in the seas, in the air, and things in the ground, things on the ground, and things in the cosmos. Everything that we can see, the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, the galaxy, all of it is made by him. That's first page of the Bible. The first thing that God wants us to know Page one, number one, I am the creator. He wants us to see his power, his ingenuity, his creativity, his intelligence, his greatness. And his greatness is not simply the fact that he made all of this. His greatness is the fact that he made all of this from nothing. It's creation ex nihilo. That's Latin for creation out of nothing. His greatness is that the world, the planets, the galaxies came from nothing. He simply spoke and it was. In school we learned the formula for the mass equivalence theory. The mass equivalency equation, the famous equation from Albert Einstein that's E equals MC squared. So Einstein's the guy who developed that equation that mass can be turned into energy using this formula. But we don't know the equation from our textbook. We know the equation from the atomic bomb. The atomic bomb is what taught us this equation. The atomic bomb taught us that a tiny bit of matter, an atom, has the capability to be turned into energy an energy strong enough to destroy an entire city. Split the atom, and the atom becomes a massive energy strong enough to flatten a city. And if you reverse the equation, if you take all of the energy that that bomb can produce, and somehow you put it back into the bomb, you're left with one tiny atom. All of the energy that the bomb has, when put back into the bomb, makes a piece of matter so infinitesimally small that it can't even be seen under a microscope. Now, science claims that the universe was created at the Big Bang. Science claims that at some point energy went bang and everything was created. And so the Big Bang is really the reverse of the atomic bomb. So the atomic bomb, a little bit of matter, is turned into a massive amount of energy. The Big Bang is a massive amount of energy becomes stuff. Now science can't answer the question of the first move. Science is at a loss, what caused the bang? Science asks the question, if there was nothing, then where did the energy come from? But this morning, we answer that question quite easily, and we answer it with simplicity. God spoke. God's voice is the first move. His voice is the energy that became all of this stuff. God formed the universe by the word of his power. Hebrews 11, chapter, verse 3. We're in our text this morning, Genesis chapter 1, verses 3, 6, 9, 14, 20, 24, 26. God said. God's voice. And then there was stuff. His power, his energy, his greatness produced something from nothing. Now let's go back to the atomic bomb here a minute. The bomb goes off. And the explosion decimates the city. And we can reverse the equation. The energy of the explosion becomes an atom. Unfathomable energy to produce the smallest amount of matter. And the atom is so small that there are actually more atoms in a grain of sand than there are grains of sand in the world. Meaning that the energy it would take to produce a grain of sand isn't even quantifiable. 
Numbers can't calculate the energy it would take to be transformed into a grain of sand. And of course, our God has made more than just a tiny grain of sand. Our God has made the cosmos, and the cosmos is far bigger than we can even fathom. The closest star other than our sun is called Alpha Centauri. Traveling to Alpha Centauri, give or take, would take four years if we were going at the speed of light. And light travels so fast, that if light were to circle the earth, it would circle the earth nearly eight times in one second. And traveling at that speed, it would take four years to reach the closest star. And that's just one star of many that can be seen in the night sky. And as we look up into the night sky, we see our galaxy. And our galaxy is so incredibly large that if somehow we could fly from one edge of the galaxy to the other edge of the galaxy, traveling at the speed of light, it would take over 100,000 years. And the other day, the James Webb Telescope released the image looking out into the cosmos. And many of us have seen the image. And there's stars everywhere. And some of those points of light aren't even stars. Some of those points of lights are other galaxies. The energy to destroy a city produces a piece of matter so small that it can't be seen under a microscope. And our God has produced a cosmos so large that we can't even see it with a telescope. Our God is so incredibly great that it doesn't take him millions or billions of years to do this. He simply spoke and it was. And one more thing here, Genesis chapter 1, it tells us that God spoke the universe into being. And speaking is nothing more than communicating. God is communicating through all of this creation. I am greater than anything that can ever be articulated, far greater than anything your mind will ever be able to understand. And all throughout this book, God's people look out at nature or they look up at the night sky and they are overcome by his greatness. Amazed. Overwhelmed. This morning, may that be our posture as well. The Creator is great, and we also see in the creation that our God is good. Second thing we notice about God from His creation is His goodness. One of my favorite architects is a man named Richard Meyer. Richard Meyer designs everything in white. Everything in his buildings is always white, and like many others, I think his buildings are absolutely beautiful. When we were in Rome, we took a trip to go see one of his most famous pieces of work, his building, the Jubilee Church. And I remember being on the bus. I remember seeing the masterpiece in the distance. And then the bus took us up to the front door, and then we went inside. And that's when I began to notice the building is, as they say, good from far, but far from good. It was good from far away. But when we got up close, it was obvious that there were lots of little problems. All the walls were made out of concrete. And where the concrete walls met the floor, there were all these little gaps. And it's really hard to pour concrete perfectly flat, and that was obvious. And the metal doors were painted white, and the concrete walls were painted white. And concrete takes paint different than steel. And so even though they were the same color, you wouldn't know it by looking at it. A masterpiece, a famous creation, and when you looked at it closely, it was sloppy. In God's creation, there is nothing sloppy. In God's creation, the closer you get to it, the more we look at it, the more good we find it to be. Not too long ago, Maria was reading this book, The Hidden Life of Trees. It's absolutely fascinating what scientists have discovered. Trees will never grow in the space of another tree. Trees will never attack one another. 
So you never see one tree growing into another tree. And trees work together almost as one. But at the same time she's reading that book, I'm watching a documentary about the Amazon rainforest. And these scientists are talking all about this idea of mutualism. It's all about how things are dependent upon one another. And so in the rainforest, the monkey eats the flower, and then as he goes to eat the next flower, he takes the pollen from one flower to the next. The flowers get fertilized, the monkey gets fed. The flower depends on the monkey, the monkey depends on the flower. It's a mutualistic relationship. And this world is full of mutualistic relationships. Everything that God has made is required to depend on every other thing. All of it is interwoven. And our God has made many things. Verse 11, God produced the vegetation. Verse 20, God made the life in the sea. Verse 24, God made the life on the land. The plants, the sea life, the animals, all of that work together in what scientists call an ecosystem. All of those things working together as one. This is why scientists are so concerned about when things may go extinct. Because if something goes extinct, if the animal becomes extinct, or the plant becomes extinct, no one knows how that's going to affect everything else. The goodness in his creation is seen in how everything works together. Many parts, one working unit. And that idea of distinct parts but one unit is made most clear in the creation of mankind. Look at verse 26 and 27. God creates mankind, male and female, he created them. Two creations of distinction, male or female, one unit, mankind. Now look back over this chapter with me a second. Verse 3, God said, let there be light. Verse 6, God said, let there be a sky. Verse 9, God said, let there be water. Verse 11, God said, let there be plants. Verse 14, God said, let there be stars. Verse 20, God said, let there be sea life. Verse 24, God said, let there be land animals. And then verse 26, let us make mankind in our image. Verse 26, we see us and our. And the text doesn't say God like every other time before. No, this text says us. And many believe that this is the first reference to the Trinity. The Trinity. We believe that God is one and yet God is three persons. One God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One God, unity, Three persons, distinction. Let us make mankind, male and female, in our image. God made mankind, male and female. There's unity in mankind and there is distinction, male and female. Male and female is a reflection of the goodness of himself. The creator is one. His will is unified. The creator is one. His purpose is unified. The creator is one. His actions are unified. The creator is one and yet three distinct persons. And three distinct persons in such harmony, there is but one God. Genesis chapter 1 is declaring that all of this creation is echoing the goodness of God. In the creation there are many parts. And all the parts are unified into one system. Male and female are distinct. And yet one kind. God has made all of this to echo his goodness. Because there is nothing better to echo than God himself. Third point, glory. Glory is praise and honor. God created all of this for his glory. 
He created all of this creation to show his worth, his power, his intelligence, his creativity, his goodness, glory. Looking back through these verses again, verse 3, God tells the stars to shine, and they shine, and they shine for his glory. Verse 11, God tells the land to produce plants, and the plants spring forth for his glory. Verse 20, God tells the land to produce life, and life is formed for his glory. Verse 24, the, God tells the land to produce life, and there's life for his glory. Verse 20, the sea to produce life, and there's life for his glory. And notice after everything God creates, he takes a step back, and he says, that's good. He gets glory from his good creation. And that's why he created. Our God didn't need anything. Our God was not lacking. Our God was not somehow deficient. He created all of it for his glory because there is nothing better for God to do than to glory in himself. We tell our kids, don't brag, don't boast, don't show off. We say of others who are prideful, we may say that they're a narcissist. We say, don't be prideful, don't boast, don't glory in yourself. And the reason we say don't glory in yourself is because there's always someone better. But that's not true for God. There is no one and no thing better than God himself. And so for the best possible good, God glories in himself. And that's why he made all of this. He made all of this to glory in himself. This week we start Vacation Bible School. Our motto is created in Christ, designed for his purpose designed for his purpose. We are designed like everything else in God's creation for one purpose, and that's to bring God glory. He made us, and he designed us to declare his glory in our lives. And just as there is nothing better for God to do than to glory in himself, there is nothing better that we can do than to glorify God. And when we glorify God, we are doing what we are designed to do. And when we do what we are designed to do, everything falls into place. Everything falls into place. It really is this simple. Glorify God. And you will have the best life possible. And so I want to end by just listing some ways that we can glorify God in our daily lives. First, and maybe most obvious, we can glorify God in our work. So all work is creating something. All work is reflecting something of the Creator. The Creator worked in creation, and our work is creation. And when we work, when we create, we are being like God. When we work, we are showing that we are made in his image and that brings him glory. Going to school. I know no one wants to hear this, but school starts in four weeks. At school, we learn of God's order. Math and science are learning something of God's creation and we glorify God by discovering what he has made or raising children. God is the one who gives life, and it glorifies God when male and female in marriage give life to their children. And not only physical life, but also emotional life. It glorifies God when we give our children our love, our care, our concern, our provision. Leisure. Leisure and rest is simply enjoying what God has made. God delighted at the end of those six days. God took a step back and said, it is good. When we take a break, and when we sit on the beach and look out over the ocean, or when we sit in front of a campfire, when we 
enjoy simply being. We're enjoying his creation and our God is glorified. Service. So many of us are volunteering this week at Vacation Bible School. Our God is the God who works and he works for the good of others. He created to be good to us. He wants us to enjoy the fruits of his labor. In the same way, we serve so that others may enjoy the benefit from our labor. That brings him glory. Worship. Creation is for the purpose of our worship. Creation calls us to see the creator for who he is. And when we worship, when we ascribe to him with our mouths who he is and what he has done, he is glorified. He has designed us to glorify Him. Let's pray together. Father God, You made us to glorify You. Father, we pray that our lives, whether eating or drinking, worshiping or serving, working or resting, we pray that we would use all of it to glorify You. This morning, we thank you and we praise you for your creation. This morning, we thank you and we praise you for our very lives. We thank you for the opportunity to live and for the opportunity to be. And we pray that we would glorify you with it. In Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. In a moment, we're going to sing all the creatures of our God and King. We are creatures of our God and King. Let's worship him for who he is as we sing. Let's sing. God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. that sail and have no long. Oh, praise him, alleluia. Thou rising morn in praise rejoice, ye lights of evening find a voice. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him, alleluia. tender heart forgiving others take your part oh sing ye alleluia ye who long pain and sorrow bear praise God and him who pass your care oh praise him oh praise him alleluia Alleluia. Let all things their Creator bless and worship Him in humbleness. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit three in one. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, 
Praise Him, all creatures here below. Oh, praise Him, alleluia. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, alleluia. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded and they were created. And they do praise Him because they were created. We were created. Let's leave here praising Him. You are dismissed and we will meet at a quarter till for our Vacation Bible School meeting.